Hey everyone, so uh, this is going to be a pretty fun engineering discussion. So Yazan here worked on, uh, well, a lot of things at Valve, yes. but the thing we're talking about is the Steam Deck OLED, yep. which is not a new product, but uh, when I covered that back when you guys launched it, I worked with you because you guys did some really interesting changes that when you look at the PCBs, stuff has moved and rotated, yep. and it's not immediately apparent why. Yep. And so I think we can get some really interesting insight into some of your job on the engineering sure, side. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, where do we want to start with this? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess uh, I can maybe start with memory, because yeah. that's actually usually what we start with when we do motherboard layouts. Mm. Uh, memory has a lot of traces. There's a lot of uh, stringent requirements on length, trace, uh, length matching and propagation delays and all that kind of stuff. And there's a, you know there's a lot of traces, so it really kind of imposes all the restrictions, like how many layers you need is typically dictated by how much the memory you need. Mm -hmm. The location of the CPU and memory is typically done in like they're a group and they have to move together. You really, there's not much ton of flexibility there. So, so we start with memory. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly and their new Duronaut Thermal Paste. Thermal Grizzly claims its Duronaut Paste is intended for long-term stability and endurance, focusing on paste longevity in addition to the usual performance focus. Thermal Grizzly's Duronaut Paste comes with applicators and spreaders and ships in numerous tube sizes, aiming to provide a high-end paste for PC builds and daily driven overclocks by enthusiasts. Learn more at the link in the description below. We moved from having four by 32 memory ICs mm. to being um, two by 64 memory ICs. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that was mostly because the having two packages is just they're smaller, obviously, so that we can get more space. But because of the BGA density, um, it made the memory writing really hard. Okay. <laughs> the fan out, right? Because the traces start with the CPU and they fan out to two memory ICs, so you gotta have more of a, a, a fan out to go with. Right. But with having uh, two by 64s, you have to fan out and in fact fan back in to uh, meet the memory ICs. Right. So that actually was harder, but it opened up um, you know, more space for us to kind of you know, spread the components more, get better cooling. All right. but, uh, but yeah, as I said before, the other thing we did was, because the CPU and the memory basically are a group and they, you have to rotate them and move them in one block, um, we just rotated the whole thing, uh, like I think 90 degrees. I think it was 90. Yeah, yeah, 90 degrees. And partly because, again, because um, there's so many memory traces, that side of the processor is basically completely blocked for routing. It's all memory traces. Right, you so can't every, run anything else. Yeah, so everything has to go around. Like mm. even if you want to you know, reach the Type-C port, which is directly behind the memory, mm. you have to go down, go around, and because simply, you know, they just, there's not enough space to go. Uh, under memory. So well, and, and you mentioned this, but to, just in case anyone missed it, um, yeah. so my understanding has been uh, memory traces need to basically be the same length, yes, or at least have the same sort of delays built in. So we they have to. So the, the ultimate goal is to have the same. The ultimate goal is to have all the bits arrive at the same time, mm -hmm. which typically means you need to have the same propagation delay, which is. More or less, the trace length has to be the same, mm -hmm. but if there's some details where if you have some traces on the top layers and some traces on the middle layers, the dielectric constant of air and the dielectric constant of the PCB dielectrics is different. Okay. So the, the speed of light is a little bit different, or the propagation is a little bit different, so you have to actually keep that in mind. So that actually, it, it's different enough that it actually comes into yes. play? Yes, okay. yes, yes. <laughs> uh, so you have to, uh, not only that, but the, to meet impedance, like the, the top traces will have to be different thicknesses, mm. a different width than the traces on the inside, or the spacing between the ground layer and the traces have to be different. So right. you have to keep in mind, uh, the dielectric constant of what the, the what light is traveling whatever through medium basically. yes is on the yeah. other side what um what about on the thermal side so yeah. uh, one of the things I, I think I remember the deck um, the fan if I remember correctly is like central yep. right yep. so the fans yep. are roughly here I th I want to say there's a plate here that has a slot under the plate that air can, I guess, get in through to the fan, and then this ends up exhaust? Yes. Is that all accurate? So, um, yeah, so basically we have, um, we have, we call it the mid-frame. Mm -hmm. It's like a magnesium frame that is primarily used for rigidity, so like you can sort of yank on this thing and not uh, bend it too much. Right. Um, and basically, uh, the motherboard, everything mounts to it, we use it as a chassis for everything. And the way this is set up is that they have a blower here that sort of sucks in air from all kinds of places. Actually, there's a 
significant amount of air that comes through the triggers. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, okay. and the joysticks. Um, we Fine. obviously have a ton of air coming through here as well, but there's a decent amount of air that comes from the from every little kind of gap that it can. Is is any of that when you're doing thermal design? Are you looking at like maybe we can pull air through the trigger, or is it just a byproduct of how the trigger was made? It was not intentional. Okay. I mean, uh, we knew it was going to happen, but yeah. we're not trying to use it anyway. It was just got it. You know, based on the design, but. It, it, it's important for us to keep it in mind while we were designing other things because, you know, if you're not careful of how, uh, like if we're trying to primarily channel air through here, mm. if we're not careful, like we might not get a ton of air simply because it's coming through here and it's, it's not right. actually doing what you want it to do. Right. So we just need to know how the air is behaving internally. But, uh, but anyway, so air is coming from all kinds of places. Um, we have a battery here that is pretty, it takes up the most of the thickness, so not mm -hmm. a ton of air goes through here. But below and above the motherboard, um, we have air comes through. So the air sort of comes through here, travels over the RF shield, and we use the RF shield for heat sinking. So mm -hmm. all the components on the top side of the motherboard that we think need extra cooling, we use a thermal pad or thermal putty to, right. to take it to, this, to the shield can. Like the SSD is an example of that. Um, and so as air comes through, travels over the, the RF shielding, get cools those. The components on the bottom side of the motherboard don't have that advantage. Mm -hmm. And so what we did is we created um, some gaps in the midframe to sort of make air, make air go up right. in certain spots, hit those components, and then get to the fan. Mm. And one of those, I think you mentioned, is like right here that's directly underneath uh, a memory regulator. Yeah. And literally just kind of put, put a, a small hole there for air to just kind of cool that component off. Right. What about um, for... Uh, moving the components around, so I think some stuff moved. I know a lot of it was yeah. because the memory module changed. Yep. But uh, if I remember correctly, some of the VRM components moved also. Yes. So what what was the reasoning for that? So um, it essentially, as I said before, by by switching to the, to the smaller memory ICs, it just opened up places so that we can put them where we actually wanted to put them, mm -hmm. as opposed to where we had to put them. If that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I think one of the things I mentioned is when you make a product for the first time, you kept you typically have some redundancy, mm -hmm. right? Like, you know, you're not like, oh yeah, we want to do I2S, I, I2, I, I2S audio, but we might not have some other path just in case we want to try ourselves. Or mm -hmm. this component supports I2C and SPY. We're not sure which one we want to use. We're going to write both. Mm -hmm. But when you do a second jump product, you kind of figure that out. So you don't need as many of those kind of right. redundant paths as possible. So we removed those, which again, opened up more space for us to move components to where we originally wanted them to, but couldn't because there was no space there. Yeah. So um, you know, the uh, some of the CPU and the GPU VRMs moved from being directly underneath the APU to being on the side, mm. closer to the fan, where there's more airflow. Where we would have loved to put them initially, but we just couldn't. Yeah. Um, similarly, some regulators also moved in a little bit more opportune places. I don't know if I'm, I might be remembering this wrong, but I think. Something got a little shorter. It might have been the memory, but it, it may. There was something that moved from like, it was a millimeter tall, and then it became half a millimeter tall or something. I wish I and remember which one that was. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. I guess all relating back to being able to force air through uh, different pathways on the yeah, board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and it's interesting, um, one of the things we noticed that by making the, the you know, again, we moved a bunch of components, uh, and then we moved components around to be more optimal. We actually found out that. Some components no longer needed to be heat sunk to the mm -hmm. RF shield can, and so we were able to remove some thermal pads and some thermal putty from. Uh, Does that free up in any meaningful way? I guess sort of the the capacity, so to speak, of the shield can. I mean, if you're taking some power out of it, yeah, are you giving yourself any more headroom, or doesn't really matter? Or? It's so. Um, there's actually, as a general rule, you can, can there's there's different strategies. Mm -hmm. One of the strategies is try to isolate the heat from the surface as much as possible because the thermal limit for the CPU is 100 degrees. Right. The thermal limit for the skin is 48, much lower. 45, <laughs> yeah. yeah, right? Right. So if you're able to not allow, uh, trap the heat on in the component and have that component be well within its thermal margin, that's actually the best thing you can right. do. But if you can't, then you can't. Yeah. Um, and. And so ultimately speaking, what it comes to is we can only have, there's only so much air that flows through the system. Mm. And as such, there's only so much thermal capacity that moves through the system. So the less components you need to cool, the better. Right. So if you can make that component just trap its own heat internally, that's really the best thing you could do. Mm. 
Um, and so that's kind of what, what we ended up with certain things. Very cool, yeah. yeah. No, that's awesome. And then, uh, of course, the, this will run after the Steam Machine coverage runs, but yep. um, you, know, you were in the other video talking about this. Yes. So if anyone's curious about that, you can check that out. The only particularly different thing here uh, is this is an e-ink display. Yes. And just as I said, this is, uh, again, not for sale. This is literally, we made it specifically for internal testing purposes. Yeah. Uh, this will just let's, let's keep tabs on what the device is doing without needing a monitor plugged in. And we, it's just super useful for it's us. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure somebody will make one. Someone will make it. <laughs> but it won't be us. You know? Right, right. Yeah. Very cool. Cool. Well, thank you for joining yes, me. Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you. And we'll see you all next time. Yeah, thank you.